Welcome back to AS Level Psychology. Today we'll be moving on with the course and looking at the cognitive interview. Accessing memories. Information is going to be organized so that memories can be accessed in a number of different ways. Memories are what we call context dependent, so they will be retrieved if the cues present at the time of storage are reinstated. So for example, if we're looking at a certain object when we're, conduct when we're you know, conducting a task, and then we look at that object again, we're going to remember the task that we were doing. So that is going to be the cue that was present in the time the memory was stored. So what is a cognitive interview? Cognitive interviews are different to the standard interviews as they f use kind of four main techniques to improve the way that we retrieve all the data to try and, that we try and remember. So as a result, we have an optimum level of information that can be accessed. The first um, part of the cognitive interview is to um, reinstate all the context. So by recreating the conditions of the event, the interviewee may reinstate some of the memories, hence uh, retrieving more of the information. So um, as a result, when we're trying to look at a crime scene, for example, if we look at more of the cues present and sort of um, talk about them even more, kind of maybe elaborate them and, well, reinstate the context, we're going to know more, more about it and we may get more memories that come up from the cues present, hence being the evidence in this example. We can also change the sequence and what this does is change the sequence of the events that happened in the um, sort of memory that we're trying to remember. So the witness will be asked to record what they know in a different list so they won't skip any of the details that they remembered out. So if you're trying to remember a list of numbers, you may list all the numbers in a different sequence, so we make sure that we don't list any out. You can also change perspective, and this is to attempt to recall all the information from another point of view. So as a result, if we look at it from someone else's perspective, no extra details will be missed, which we may not have been able to see. So for example, if we are look, talking about a robbery in a shop, the storekeeper may not see what the car was parked out outside. However, if we look at it from a different point of view and ask maybe an eyewitness on the road or through the CCTV cameras, we will be able to remember sort of what vehicle they were driving. So by changing perspective, we will remember all different parts of what the um, sort of the appearance of the burglar and everything. Also, we can report everything and this is when the interviewee will just recall everything, absolutely everything they know to make sure that any insignificant details which they may you know, miss out, which to them may be insignificant, but to others may be significant, aren't missed out. So on our list, they just list everything possible and any extra details so we know absolutely everything about the crime. So now we're going to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of the cognitive interview. So the first advantage is that it can be conducted with very little training. So we can get out more, um, you know, improved results without having to put a lot of effort in. It also will improve the interviewee's memory and give them a better results than a standard interview would. However, the disadvantages are that the results are dependent on the skills of the interviewee and the interviewer. If we have someone that's completely terrible at conducting interviews, then we won't get um, much information from it. Also, it um, decreases the accuracy of the um, of the memory that's being recalled. However, the amount recalled is increased, but you know, that's a trade-off which you'll, some people are willing to take. Also, it improves recall, but not recognition. So not much more can be remembered about the culprit, but they can recall who it is. Okay, here are some questions. What I would like you to do is have a go at answering these questions. Uh, once you have done so, um, continue with the video, move on to the answers and see if you got them right. Okay, so here are the answers. If you did get all of them right, congratulations. I would advise you to move on to the next video. But if you did not, um, I would advise you to go over your notes once more or rewind the video to the part you got wrong so in the exam you can get it right. Okay, this has been the end of the lesson. Next lesson, we'll be looking at the last part of section two, which is all about memory, and we will be looking at mnemonics. So until then, I will see you.